Hi everyone, this is Kai with Serious Watches and in this video we want to be talking about different sorts of glass that is used in watches. Now, when you're buying a watch, there's several things you can consider, what, what resistance, what sort of movement, but also a, a thing that you commonly consider is what sort of glass does the watch have? Because it will affect the things you can do with the watch and the way it will wear over time. Watch glass of course has been around for a very long time and over time different sorts of glass have been used. Back in the day it used to be plexiglass which is still used by some models to inspire a vintage look but in contemporary watches there's two sorts of glass that are mostly used. Either mineral glass or sapphire glass. Now there's different flavors as you can call it but other companies may create something that is very similar to mineral glass but just give it a different name but we'll, we'll try and stick to the basics mineral glass, sapphire glass. Now, the biggest difference that you'll encounter when wearing it is that sapphire glass is much harder than mineral glass. That means it will scratch less easily and you know, with basic wear and tear, it will look good as new even after a few years. Mineral glass is slightly softer and it will pick up scratches. No matter how careful you are, there's, there's bound to be some sort of incident that will cause a small impact and it may leave a mark on the watch. Now I have to admit that compared to plexiglass, even mineral glass, is it's not that bad. It's not like you can scratch it by merely looking at it, but it will pick up scratches over time. A downside, well, on paper at least, of sapphire glass is that because it's so hard, it's more inclined to shatter. Upon a big impact, the watch may actually shatter, while mineral glass will more likely crack. Does this happen a lot in real life? I have to admit, I mean, I've, I've never managed to shatter a sapphire glass, and I've gone through our repair tickets, and it's, it's very rare. It's mostly when you have like a serious accident, or when there's it, it doesn't happen by merely bumping into a table, for example. It does have to be a very serious impact for it to, to truly leave a mark. Now, so if you're looking at a watch and you have an option of mineral glass or sapphire glass, I would always say opt for the sapphire glass, barring very specific uh, scenarios where you may have a lot of impacts on the watch or something like that. But for most people, just buy sapphire glass unless it's much more expensive. There does tend to be a bit of a price difference. It was, I know, for example, Orient, it's usually like 40, 50 euros more that uh, that tends to impact on the MSRP. So it's a consideration as well. If you're just gonna wear it very occasionally or if you don't really care about scratches, that's also something to consider. Some people don't really care. They like the wear and tear on the watch because it adds character or something. I mean, that's what I tell myself when I look at my wrinkles. It's, it's something to consider that wear and tear does add character to a watch. But most people tend to be like, I want my watch glass to look brand new uh, and I'll opt for sapphire glass. Now, you can think, okay, that's the video. Uh, he says uh, sapphire glass is best, so may as well opt for it. I do want to show you in real life how it affects. So we've done a video about PVD coatings before. It's sort of starting to turn into serious destruction rather than serious talks, but you know, we'll, we'll show you in real life what happens when you have a bit of an accident and you know, something hits your glass. So to start, I've got some scissors. These are a very special high quality web store Ikea scissors that I bought for 50 cents. So uh, just some scissors. I've got an Orient watch that I've also used in the PVD video that we've done before. I do have to say that the watches used in these videos are already defective. They're used for spare parts of their, they can't be sold for some other reason. So we're not destroying any perfectly good watches. And to illustrate that sapphire glass, I've got this lovely stylish, nearly vintage Adox watch that's not running. So let's start with our mineral glass friend, Orient. Here we go. As you can see, the glass is in good nick. So what if I take some scissors? Imagine you're an accountant and you're, you know, you're cutting up the bookkeeping for one of your clients, as you tend to do, and you have an accident. And you just scratch it. No, nothing much. Well, Let's say you have another accident. And the glass is still in pretty good nick. Now these were not very 
hard impacts, but let's just give it another one. As you can see, not a whole lot. And this is just plain old mineral glass. Let's try the Sapphire version as well. So you're an accountant and obviously you've got some of that Panama paper money and you can afford Sapphire glass. Let's see what happens if you have a scissor accident. Nothing at all really. It's thin shatter, not, not a mark on it. So you have some more accidents. Again, not a scratch on that. So the scissors didn't prove to be much of a problem, so I've got a small hammer. Let's see what happens then. Your hammer. Let's just see what happens when I give it a small bang. Nothing. Bigger. And I cracked it. That was the point though, right? Or... Yeah, but this wasn't supposed to crack. This didn't really scratch. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is very cracked. That is very cracked. <laughs> Right, so sorry about that. That was not really supposed to happen, but what has actually happened, let me just show you. I thought the watch actually had shattered, well, the glass had, but it's just cracked. So you can actually, it's still held together. Um, so it does show that a small goldsmith hammer will do the trick if you want to destroy your glass. Um, so the mineral glass itself, I'm not sure if it's well resistant still, but it is still in one piece. As you can see, good as new. Now, in all fairness, um, obviously you're not gonna smack on your watch with a hammer, um, but that that's what it takes to break mineral glass. Obviously, we still have our sapphire glass. So let's see how that one fares. This is our sapphire glass adox. This is a small hammer. Let's say what happens upon impact. Not really a scratch on there, is there? So thus far the sapphire glass is Firing a bit better, so that's hit it some more. No, no scratch on that. What do we do next? So we've got a bigger hammer. This one is about 1.5 kilos and let's see how the sapphire glass will fare against that. So we've got the watch, we've got a bigger hammer, just now my hammer is actually starting to come apart, but the sapphire glass Yeah, there, there's some marks on there now. But again, nothing too serious. And these are relatively big impacts. So it's, it's I'm not, I'm, I'm putting some force in there. Let me just give it a few more tries, see if I can get some bigger effect. Okay, now. I do see the watch itself is broken. I mean, you can see the the minute hand flopping about, but the glass itself seems fine. Let's 
perhaps a scuff on there here and there, but nothing too serious. I mean, you, you could still wear it if the watch wasn't broken. So I do think that that sort of underlines what the issue is, is that you would need to use so much force that the watch itself is breaking to damage the glass that I would opt for sapphire glass. Would you? I hope that this video has helped you make a decision whether or not you prefer sapphire glass or mineral glass. If you have any suggestions for us on what we should do or what we should try for you so you don't have to, leave a comment below, leave a like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.